I would like to begin this video by doing a thorough inspection of this drawing. First, let's remember what we're looking at. It is the superior view, so we're above looking down, of a transverse section, so it's a horizontal section through the eyeball, and it is the right eye. We know it's the right eye because the optic nerve will be angled medially as it's going to cross with the other eye. Obviously the optic nerve would not be angled laterally because it would go outside of the head. So this is the right eyeball. We're looking down at it. Note the, the visual axis of the light entering the anterior portion of the eyeball and eventually uh, making contact with the retina. In this case, the central fovea or fovea centralis. We'll talk more about that in a moment. But let's work our way superficial to deep. On the outside of the eyeball, you'll notice a lot of adipose tissue located in the back of the eye. That's going to protect a lot of the muscles as well as the optic nerve. Embedded inside this fat, we see a couple muscles, the lateral rectus and medial rectus, but I'll remind you there were, there's four others, superior rectus, inferior rectus, and the two obliques, superior and inferior. Then we reach the eyeball, the outer layer of the eyeball being the fibrous tunic, which is made up of sclera, which is white, and then there's a junction where it turns into the cornea which is transparent. That cornea is going to let the light in. It's also going to be the first part of the eyeball that refracts the light rays, which bends the light rays. Sclera's job is to maintain the shape of the eyeball as well as protect internal structures. Moving deep from the, the fibrous tunic would be the vascular tunic, which is made up of the choroid, which has a lot of blood vessels. You can see these little red and blue dots represent little, little arteries and little veins of the choroid. It's going to help absorb any scattered light as well. If we continue from the choroid towards the anterior part of the eye, it transitions into the ciliary body. And recall the ciliary body has two primary functions. One is the ciliary muscle controls the shape of the lens, specifically during near vision. The ciliary process is going to produce aqueous humor, which is secreted from the process and circulates within the anterior cavity. That aqueous humor actually has to then drain through a little drainage canal called the scleral venous sinus, or canal of Schlem. So aqueous humor is pr continuously produced and then drained out. And if it's uh, improperly drained, it can accumulate and increase the intraocular pressure within the eyeball. And in high intraocular pressure has been a risk factor for the development of glaucoma. Then we notice coming off of that ciliary body is the iris. And within the center of the iris would be the hole we know as the pupil. So again, the vascular or middle tunic is made up of choroid, ciliary body, and iris. Then on the in inner layer of the eye is the retina. And we'll be talking more about layers of cells found in the retina, but it's going to contain your photoreceptors that convert the light rays into action potentials. Those action potentials are going to travel out of the eyeball within the optic nerve, cranial nerve 2. Okay, let's revisit the iris a bit. Uh, the, these three drawings show the iris uh, the, an unpigmented iris. Remember, the iris is what often will give eyes different colors. But you'll notice it's 
this iris is doing different things in three different uh, levels of light. Normal light, bright light, and dim light. In bright light, the iris is going to constrict the pupil. It does this using what's called the circular muscles of the iris. And those muscles, which are smooth muscles, are controlled by parasympathetic nerve impulses. And I remind you, these neurons are located in the oculomotor nerve, cranial nerve 3. And in response to dim light, the pupil will dilate by contraction of what's called the radial muscles because they kind of radiate out from that circular muscle. And that, in essence, opens up the pupil, dilates the pupil. In the next video, we're going to talk more about the details of the retina, its different cell layers, and how it eventually converts the light rays into action potentials.